So what is your name and what do you do? I go by Warren, my last name, and I'm a strength and conditioning coach over here at the Fit Spot. It's predominantly for jujitsu athletes. Is that something you wanted to do ever since you were younger? I mean, man, I've always been into uh, strength and conditioning and fitness. I was an athlete, but um, it really wasn't until I started working at a gym that bought out a jujitsu company and I uh, became pretty good friends with a black belt instructor. And he was just like, man, you gotta get on the mats. And one day after work, went to go check it out and I was hooked. It's um, addicting, isn't it? It was addicting, yeah. So that was the perfect marriage for me because I, I was already strength training and a personal trainer. And then when I started training jujitsu, it kind of put everything together because I was like, all right, so now I have a reason to get strong, a reason to get fast, a reason to get powerful. There's a purpose behind it. Yeah, exactly. And then from there, I started training some amateur level uh, MMA athletes. This was in uh, Oregon at the time, so I was working for- What part uh, of Oregon? In Portland. Portland, Oregon. Okay, I got family out there, man. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so I was working uh, out with Fabiano Scherner at an American top team. What? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was a good start for sure, but um, yeah, jujitsu athletes are really committed because you know it's one thing if you want to lose a little bit of weight or get a little bit healthy, but it's another thing if you're trying to not get knocked out in front of your friends and family. So those athletes are uh, really committed. Is there actually like strength exercises that can actually uh, help your endurance from getting knocked out? So the science on that is inconclusive. I was listening to a podcast recently where it was a sports physiologist talking about a recent study that came from the three main ways to minimize concussions. And the two main ways were reaction timing and visual acuity. And then when they got to the part where they were talking about neck strengthening, um, it's pretty anecdotal. There's not enough research out behind neck strengthening and concussion reduction mm -hmm. to be able to validate training neck strength, um, which I thought was pretty interesting. Getting knocked out, you get hit, and what happens is the brain uh, bounces off the, the sides of the skull, right? Right. And it causes you to lose conscience. Right, right. Um, hypothetically speaking, you would think toughening up your neck would help that because you're getting hit, your neck stiffens up. It's almost like when you get knocked out, your body stiffens up. Right, right. So, but yeah, man, um, just, Paying homage, bro. Well, I appreciate it. It's uh, a product of necessity because I uh, I got real sick when I was younger, and both my parents have type two diabetes. Type two diabetes is lifestyle choices. I mean, you could be genetically pred predisposed to have uh, insulin sensitivity, but at the end of the day, they pretty much had poor lifestyle choices that led them to become uh, like have metabolic disorders. And so from an early age, I kind of put those two things together. But then at, I wasn't making any changes. So right at the end of high school, I had all sorts of hormonal imbalances. I wasn't sleeping right. Um, I just had a lot of like internal things out of whack and got some blood work done. And turns out uh, I was like extremely nutrient deficient. My lack of sleep was throwing things off and my hormones were a flux. So. What age were you when you found this out? 19. But I had some pretty gnarly problems going on. Like my blood work was scary. Is this where you uh, had the ambition you know, to seek uh, fitness, health and fitness? Yeah, and the funny part about it, the first thing was lifestyle and diet. So I moved to Hawaii and lived on a farm. What? And Hawaii? Yeah, I moved to the big island. I'm, I'm, I went all the way radical. I got rid of my phone and I moved off grid and I lived on a 17 acre permaculture farm where all I did was grow food and um, all the, all the only meat that I would eat was for, from the farm as well. Non-processed, no steroids. Exactly, and I just lived outside and learned how to organic farm for like eight years. Okay, quick question. Is it something that you had to put together from scratch? Or is no, a game? I went to Hawaii with thousand dollars in my pocket and no connections whatsoever. I started working for a farm and then um, the owner and I became pretty good friends. He actually lived in Portland. This is before I'd ever gone to Portland, but uh, he was like, hey, so I have a farm in Hawaii, but I live in Oregon and I need someone to like 
run the farm while I live my life in Oregon. So do you want to live out here permanently and take over like all the farm day-to-day -day business? So I basically got to live on the Big Island rent-free and explore a lifestyle that was very different than the one I had been living. So how was how was the feeling going through this process? I was 100% uh, in. So like I don't really there was no failure in your mind. I mean, yeah, at that point <laughs> I was all the way in because what I was doing was for my livelihood and for my health. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that started with eating better and connecting with nature and living outside and changing like my entire lifestyle. It's your boy DK the Barber. Thank you guys for tuning in with this video. I had a great time talking to him, being educated, just learning his story. If you guys like this video, comment down below, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. It's to show my art and showcase my art, but showcase what we're talking about, what needs to be talking about, pushing positivity, pushing love, and uh, allowing people to come in and join this haircut, join this dirty, almost like we're just barbershop talking, you know? Exactly. But only the barbershop is wherever you decide it is. Yeah, the world is my barbershop. And you can take the same sort of connection and conversation that you'd have in a barbershop to anyone, anywhere. Anyone, anywhere. I like that. That's cool.